Hello. Today we're going to talk about the Proteus effect, which is one of my favorite avatar-related topics. I'm really excited to talk to you about it. After this lecture, you will be able to describe the exciting Proteus effect phenomenon and explain what causes it, and then finally harness the power of this phenomenon to influence your users through their avatars, but without being evil. That's the goal. Um, so the Proteus effect, it basically says that your avatar's characteristics influence your behavior after using the avatar or during using, but it's even cooler when you think about the fact that it occurs after using the avatar. So people act in ways that are consistent with their avatar's characteristics. If someone uses a taller avatar in a virtual environment, afterwards research finds they'll negotiate more aggressively in a one-on-one -on -one kind of economics negotiating task. If you use a more attractive avatar or less attractive avatar, that will affect how close you stand to people in a virtual environment and how attractive partners are that you select for yourself in a social web kind of dating app. If your avatar is an inventor compared to wearing casual clothing, you will come up with more creative solutions in a brainstorming task. This has been found in at least two or three studies from the same group um, in France at an engineering school. Um, and if you use a skinnier avatar, that will affect your physical activity. You'll exercise more after the virtual avatar use experience um, than if you use one that is heavier. Um, avatar weight has also been found to influence how much you eat afterwards, but that's a slightly different finding. Sometimes you eat more if you see a heavier avatar for men. For women, it's the opposite. But why does this Proteus effect thing even happen? Well, the psychological mechanisms are based on theories of self-perception and priming. I won't get into too much debate about what those theories are, but there is some debate in my field about which one is really responsible for the Proteus effect. I have a combined interpretation, and by explaining it, you should get the idea of what these two theories are. Watching the avatar is like watching yourself. We are used to watching other people and figuring out what they're thinking, so we often kind of watch ourselves and try to figure out what we're thinking. That's self-perception theory. Well, when you watch an avatar, your avatar, you try to figure out what you're thinking from that avatar. But the avatar isn't just you, it has these other characteristics. It has avatar-related characteristics, and then you've got this whole idea of your self-related characteristics. So by watching the avatar while you control it, you're thinking about both of those sets of characteristics, those cognitive schema is what we might call it from a psychological perspective. And by watching them at the same time, they get linked. By, the, by priming them at the same time, those two cognitive schema get linked. Tall avatar associated with a uh, kind of prowess and power, and that gets associated with my Robbie's uh, cognitive schema, which is you know what I associate with, I don't know, my identity, professor guy. So now power plus professor guy gets connected to my psychological understanding of myself, and that changes my behavior. I am thinking, oh, Robbie, uh, professor guy plus power tallness, and then all of a sudden I'm acting more aggressively when I'm negotiating on the subsequent task. That is the theory. Another interesting point here is that identification, which we've talked about at length in this course, and embodiment strengthen the effect. So when you're controlling an avatar, the Proteus effect is stronger than when you just view an avatar on the screen. So something about controlling the avatar, which as we know, leads to identification and embodiment, as well as other psychological connections to the avatar, that enhances the Proteus effect. So what does this mean? You can use this effect for good, you can do things that are not evil, like improving education, motivation to learn, your students using your serious game to learn math topics, to learn about geography, etc. If you give them an avatar and then connect them to that avatar's characteristics in a way that motivate your students, your users, that's great. That is a great use of the Proteus effect. Health outcomes, exer games. You want your users to exercise more. You've got to get them to identify with that character and see that character as being associated with exercise and persistence, um, self-efficacy in this realm, and that will lead to stronger effects in your game. Uh, well-being. If you have people just associate the avatar's characteristics with their own ideal characteristics, they will 
be more likely to act in ways that they think are ideal in health, in social, psychological interactions, etc. So this can be good. But my research and some others suggest that if the avatar is too ideal, I think we've talked about this a little bit in class, the idea of self-discrepancy, if the avatar is too much better than yourself, it makes you sad because you're like, oh, I'll never achieve that. But you can still use this notion of the ideal self in the Proteus effect together. I've done that in some of my research. So design implications and recap all combined together. The avatar's characteristics can influence your user's perception of themselves. That's the Proteus effect kind of mechanism. And the non-user associated characteristics become associated with the user's self. And that leads to the Proteus effect, um, as does identification and embodiment with the character, feeling psychologically connected to it. And this will change your user's behaviors. This is a mechanism that can be used in serious, serious games, if you like that word or uh, that title or not, I don't know. But uh, if you have games or virtual environments where you're trying to change your user's behavior even beyond that in interaction with the game or environment, the Proteus effect is a great mechanism. Um, but I want you to not be evil. I would prefer that you take this tool, this powerful tool, and you use it to uh, make the world a slightly better place. Though, of course, everybody has to make money too, so I get that. But maybe I should give you an avatar for this class that makes you morally responsible, and then the Proteus effect will make you that way. Or maybe not. There is, of course, variance in the extent of these effects, as there are in all of our social scientific kind of phenomena that we study. So for now, that's it. Thank you very much. I'll see you not next time, because this is the last lecture. Uh, maybe I'll post a goodbye video or something, but if not, it's been totally real uh, hanging out with my, my webcam and the screen screen and you. Um, and hopefully, you have a good experience in this class. I really would love your feedback. So thank you so much for seeing it all the way through to the end. Take care. Say hi to me out in the real world.